Hey guys, a couple of weeks ago, I was browsing the slash r slash Mac apps subreddit, as I often do of an evening, and there was a post on there from a guy who said that as a kind of a hobby thing, he'd built himself a Lightroom clone in two weeks. Furthermore, he said that he was making the app open source and was keen on developing it further and was looking for feedback from people on Reddit as to how the app worked, how they found the functionality and what could be done to improve it. Now, I'm all in favour of open source photo editing apps, particularly ones that don't look like the flight deck of a 747 dark table. So I went to the GitHub page, downloaded the app, and I've been putting it through its paces, and I'm actually really impressed by it, and I have high hopes for this app and how it might subsequently develop. So let's get on the Mac, and I'll walk you through it. Once you've got the app installed, you'll be invited to add a folder of photos to the app so it can be indexed and appear in this library-like module. I just added my standard gallery of test photos. It does do nested subfolders, so you can point it at a root folder and it will show you all the subfolders underneath. So this is quite a nice, pleasing screen. There's no way of changing the size of the thumbnails at this stage of the game, but you can give your photos a rating. You can copy settings from one to another, and you can also export directly from this screen. To edit any photograph, just double click on it, and you're taken to the adjustment screen. And we can see all the adjustments down on the right-hand side here with what I have to say is a really nicely laid out interface. There is a bit of overkill on some of these sliders. I found they're a little bit too powerful and some aren't as effective as I might like. For example, I was trying to drop the highlights on this shot. This is what it looks like by default. And drag this down and it kind of washes out uh, the highlights in the center there. Hopefully that's something that he can, he can fix up. But running down the adjustments, we can see we've got all the basic stuff here, exposure, contrast, white and black points, etc. So I can bring up the whites and drop the blacks. We have a curves tool. I'll just put a little curve on there just to drop the shadows down, make them a little bit darker and bring up the contrast a little bit. We have a temperature and tint slider. There's no degree Kelvin rating on here, so you'll just have to wing it and know that moving to the right will warm the photo up and moving to the left will cool it down. If we go down the page a little bit, we've got a really nice little vibrant slide, a really nice so it will bring up the uh, saturation on the least saturated colors and the global saturation too, if you want. If you want to target a broad color range, you can use the color mixer. Let's say I want to go for the green tones here and just bring the saturation up on those. We've got a sharpness slider, some basic noise reduction. Don't go expecting any great things from this. It's just your standard luminance, old school noise reduction at this stage in the game. We've also got clarity, dehaze and structure. So basically contrast tools, clarity is quite a broad blunt tool and structure is a little bit more subtle. There's also a vignette and a grain tool. Over on the right here, you can see we've got a suite of icons down the right-hand side here, which allow us to access the other functions. For instance, we've got a cropping tool, uh, which allows you to rotate the photograph as well, but we've got the standard kind of ratios in here, or you can set your own custom size. Then directly underneath that, we have the masking tool. And yes, believe it or not, there's already a bit of AI masking in here. We've got the subject masking. Doesn't work the greatest. Don't go expecting Adobe Lightroom grade subject masking, but you know, it's early days. The app's about three or four weeks old. So I think we can cut the guy some slack. I've just got a simple linear mask on here, which you can see. I quite like the way this works. Just drag down and I can rotate the mask by dragging these little blue reticles up and down. And if I grab one of the bars at the top or bottom, I can change the feather. So I can do a nice, subtle, linear gradient, just fading out down the page. 
Then we have the presets. So if you want to save any of your settings, because they're standard settings that you think you might use again, then you can store them in there. Here's the empty AI tool section. He's got a lot of big plans for this app, actually, in terms, even in terms of generative stuff, fills, expand, and all that kind of thing. Uh, and here is the export tab where once you finish your edits, you can choose where JPEG, PNG, or TIFF quality settings and export the image. Considering this guy said it was about two weeks work, I'm very impressed with it. Some of these sliders need some work. I think that he said he was using the open source, uh, is it Libraw, uh, raw editing library? Can't remember if I got that right, but it's an open source raw editor that he's using to create these adjustments inside his app. But I'm sure over the coming months and hopefully years, it'll be able to finesse this and grow it into a proper open source alternative to Adobe Lightroom. So that's Rapid Raw. It's pretty neat, isn't it? You'll find the link to this app in the description below this video. If it interests you, do go down and download it from the GitHub page. It's available for all the regular platforms, Windows, Mac, and Linux. So whatever system you've got, you can give it a test. And I suggest you do give some feedback to the developer so that he can progress it and grow the app uh, and put all the cool stuff that he's talking about adding into it. All right, just a quick one tonight, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know the drill, give it a like. And if you like what you're seeing on this channel, then consider subscribing. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.